Hello, I'm Spade. I see a lot of people asking about what it's like to play on ESEA as an average player, and when they should start. So I thought I'd do a video about that. Okay, so first, what is ESEA? For all practical purposes, ESEA is a website and a company that maintains a set of servers for Counter-Strike and other games. Uh, that have different options than the Valve competitive matchmaking servers. Some of the main differences, the big ones, uh, is that the ESEA servers run at 128 tick as opposed to 64 tick, which is what the Valve servers run at. The best layman's explanation I can make of that is that the Valve servers update between the server and your computer 64 times a second and the ESEA servers attempt to update 128 times a second. So generally speaking, the communication between each individual player and the centralized server where the game is actually happening uh, is twice as fast on ESEA as is in Valve. Now there's a million reasons and there's 100,000 debates about why Valve's doing it the way they are. I'm not even going to go into that. Suffice to say, ESEA runs 128 tick servers, which makes for a different kind of gameplay. And many professionals say a better gameplay, but it is very it is different. The other thing that ESEA has is a different and larger map pool. That means when you go into play a pickup game, uh, you have the option of playing maps that you don't have the option of playing in Valve's competitive matchmaking setup. Uh, Mirage is one of the most popular ones, as is uh, DE Cash and DE Mill. Those are some of the common examples. When you join a, a pickup game, uh, you know, you, you're in warm-up mode for a while. You just kind of double-click on things and uh, you're in warm-up. And, um, and you have the option at the end of the warm-up, once the pickup game is full of 10 people, you have the option to vote on what the map is. And that's kind of how it works. So ESEA does have kind of a ranking system. Um, you do have a profile. Uh, you do have to pay. It's like six bucks a month, um, uh, seven bucks. I think it's six ninety nine a month, um, and uh, yeah, that's sort of the basic idea. And they track your statistics. It's kind of neat. Um, you can go through and see, you know, how did I do on on the last uh, pug I played? Um, you know, your stats here. Uh, I'm usually near the bottom of the list. <laughs> So yeah, that's for practical purposes, that's what ESEA is. And um, I'll show you now, I'll show you the client, uh, which you download uh, as a premium member. And uh, that's kind of how you interact with all of the pickup games and other ESEA stuff that goes on. So I'm going to show you the ESEA client. I actually have it running, which means it's in my tray. Um, that's one thing to note is that if you play a game and then you exit and then you don't see the ESEA client down here, it's because it's been minimized. Uh, down here on the right. Uh, this is sort of the central dashboard, as far as I can tell, uh, for interacting with ESEA. Because they have their own sort of anti-cheat and login system, and the, there's a clearly a guy who knows what he's doing with the code, um, you actually have to uh, boot your games from the ESEA client if you want to play on an ESEA server. And likewise, if you're done playing on ESEA, you actually need to exit Counter-Strike and go back in normally to play like a matchmaking game or, or you know or whatever on valve um the client it seems like it's fairly straightforward you have a list of servers it's a server browser i usually sort it by type i'm usually looking to play either an aim map which texas 208 seems to be the only one available to me for some reason i think there's some sort of automatic filtering that happens uh or a pug and uh it actually the server data refreshes uh when you click on the a server so if you kind of want to scroll through and kind of check them each, just click on them uh, and it'll start updating the ping and uh, or you can hit the refresh button to get kind of a, a general refresh going. Uh, double click and it will launch uh, Counter-Strike for you and bring you into the uh, pug. Uh, pugs on ESEA, the way uh, chat works is that you cannot chat with your team while you are dead uh, so uh, that's a little different than matchmaking um, and it's a little it's hard to get used to sometimes like I, I find myself like after I'm after I'm dead I'll just go hey there's one in oh right nobody can hear me so that's a quick overview 
of the client. You can see your buddies here. Um, and uh, yeah, that should be good enough. So one of the big questions I see a lot is, when should I start to play on ESEA? You know, I'm kind of an average player. Me personally, on Valve's matchmaking system, I'm a Gold Nova 2 right now, which is pretty average. It's this two-star thing. It's kind of right in the middle. So these are just some clips of me playing uh, on ESEA matches. Um, to be honest, they're probably uh, clips of me doing better <laughs> than clips of me doing worse. I think these are probably sort of better examples of my play. But you can kind of get a sense of, you know, I'm kind of the average Joe, and I can still play in these servers. Um, ESEA actually has a ranking system, kind of like the ELO rank uh, setup, except that they actually tell you how it works. Uh, it's called RWS, and it stands for Rounds Win Share. And it's basically a combination of how much damage you've done through the rounds and whether you plant a bomb or whether you defuse the bomb. And you only get RWS points if your team wins the round, which mine didn't in that case. So I get no RWS from that, you know, play. Uh, I really enjoy playing on, e on, on ESEA as kind of, an, you know, an average player. I think I learn a lot faster. Um, being able to play on the 128 tick servers uh, is fun. It is different. Um, I do get my ass handed to me a lot. Uh, you know, I was playing Mirage the other day, and holding connector was insanely difficult. That happened to me like three times, and I tried, you know, different ways of approaching that. It just wasn't working. Um, I think it, it's, it's a good opportunity for me to get better in a scenario where um, I, I'm going to have examples around me. I'm going I'm, <laughs> I'm to have examples of... I didn't even realize I had a nade kill there. You know, I have good examples to follow in the other players. Uh, another thing people ask about is whether or not there's much strategy in ESEA pugs, like whether teams, uh, you know, pick up game teams actually plan out strats, call things, and do kind of teamwork stuff. So uh, I included a clip yeah, of okay. uh, someone, you know, volunteering to do some strat calling on Mirage uh, earlier. So we'll watch that here in a sec. I'll strike call if you guys don't mind. If everyone's gonna listen, I'm in. I don't nah, care. Fuck around. Let's go. Just win. We're gonna have uh, two B tunnels or B apartments right after that. Uh, they're gonna be rushing hard. Uh, I'll get a smoke, and who's ever coming in with me get a smoke. Smoke cat, smoke connector, and smoke window. And don't stop at all. So that happens every now and then uh, on ESEA. One of the things that I would recommend, you know, before you jump into a pug, is to get on uh, on the Maps Workshop and get some of these maps. DE Mirage, DE Cash, uh, definitely get Mill. And play a couple of games on your own server, on your own computer, against bots. You know, pick whatever bot skill level you want. But load up the map uh, and actually and actually play some of the game because you're going to need to know these maps at least to a basic level before you start playing uh, in order to be a, you know any use at all. Even if your aim is really good, just having a sense of the maps uh, that you don't see in Valve's matchmaking um, is going to make a big difference. Now, playing against bots isn't going to do a lot for your actual gameplay, but it is going to help you learn the map. A couple of other quick tips. When you join a pug, type dot players in the chat to see a list of the players in the pug. If you see a bunch of league or really good guys, you can leave. Another one, when you join a pug, be upfront about the fact that you're new to the map or the game. Hey guys, so just so you know, I'm still new to this map, so if I'm about to do something stupid, let me know. Three yeah, me too. You got two stupids. This, this and... is my first day playing. I've never done this. What is this map called? Vagina. Hey, how do you shoot? Uh, enter. I think you. I think you use spacebar. No, it's enter. Spacebar is jump. Right. Scroll up. Scroll up. The point is, as an average player, I have a lot of fun playing on ESEA. I think I learn really quickly. It's fun to play on different maps, 
the ones that you see the pro matches play on, especially like Mirage. And I think it's really worthwhile. At least it's worth the seven bucks a month to me. I hope that's helpful. Spade out.